Howdy, me Flow Bart here, and welcome. All right, part of the basic training and the FPS game that we're putting together in this training scenario is, well, we want to add a main menu to get us into our game. We've got map one or level one. We got some functionality. We got um, bots that um, will turn and face us whenever we shoot them, and if they're in range, they turn red, so we know that they're aggressive. And they're going to come after us. They have a hit reaction. We have a sniper mode. We've got emitters whenever we shoot. We have death animations. We have everything we need for killing our bots and for engaging in basic combat. So let's investigate. We need a main menu. We want to be able to get into it. And quickly, let's check. Um, was kind of screwing around with a uh, another map here. So, yeah, this is with some of the watermill stuff. Quickly just slapped together. We got apple trees and a little bit of foliage. And, yeah, it looks like crap, but it's, you know, something we'll start off with. Got water. We can walk in the water. We got a little bridge that goes across the water. And we can go across it. There's a boat sitting over there. We can go across. Lovely. Okay. Amazing. So, how do we go about making a main menu? Huh. Well, why are you loading? Why are you doing stuff? Why is my frame rate ditching? Let's create a new level. And we're going to create it as an empty level. Nothing here. And it's nothing to save, so... Oh, gee, really? Is there a GeForce um, game-ready driver available? Eat a dick. I don't need a damn driver every three days. My shit's working just fine. But you're going to screw up everything. You're going to ruin all my sound and yeah, all my setup that I have to do every time you do a patch. Oh, thank you, NVIDIA. Uh. Anyway... So we can actually save this. We'll hit save current. And we're going to go to our maps folder. And we're going to call this our main menu map. All right, so this is going to be our main menu. What do we have in our world settings? Nothing. We don't need anything. So if we wanted to, we could create a game mode specifically for our game, our main menu map, but we don't need anything. We don't need any characters, players, nothing special. Um, what we need is on event begin play, poof, we need a widget to pop up, and we'll go from there. So let's go ahead and start creating the widget for our main menu. So I've got a folder made for this. I'm going to create a user interface, widget blueprint. We're going to call this our W for widget main menu and this is our main menu okay so to start off with we want something that's gonna hide the rest of our map we don't need to see anything in our map whatsoever I'm gonna start off with something simple I'm gonna grab an image and I'm gonna change the color to black just straight black make it whatever color you want I'm going to anchor it to full screen and I am going to change all my offsets to zero and that's going to completely fill the entire screen. I'm going to go to my Z order. What this means the Z order is the level of where it sits and I'm going to assign this to be negative five. I don't want anything going behind this guy. So this is going to be the base. It's just going to be a black screen and here we're going to go ahead and build everything else we need. If we want to put some images in, that's great. We can put a background image in later. And we can change it from black to our background image. But let's start off with something simple, nice and plain and smooth and black. Um, and we're going to start off being in the right place. We're going to call this our background image. So we know that that's our background image. So, we can just start bringing in buttons and throwing them all over the place, and that will, okay, we'll have functionality. But let's go ahead and try to be somewhat organized. Let's create a vertical box. 
and we're going to put things in our vertical box. So we've got a list of things we can do here. We've got a border, mm, comes in handy, buttons for sure, check boxes. If we have multiple, we can use this for checking which map we want to go into. For right now, we're just going to go into map one, then we'll work on adding in the ability to change between maps whenever we're at our main menu. A named slot, eh, okay. Progress bar, um, rich text block, slider, text, text box. Text versus text box. This is text you enter in. A text box is like if you're going to put a name in for your server or things like that, you can enter text in here and then commit it into a variable. You've got extras, expendable area. We don't need inputs. Okay, these are multi line text box, and that'd be good for chat spin box. No idea. Um, but yeah, let's look down here. We got list. Interesting. Optimization. Never use them. Uh, panels, which we're going to use here in just a second. Where this is where our canvas panel is. Grid panel, so we can actually put things in, in individual grids. Horizontal box comes in quite handy. Overlays, safe zone. Uh, scale boxes, scroll boxes, yeah, there's all kind of cool stuff in here. We're going to go ahead and drag in our vertical box, and we're just going to leave it here in the middle of the screen for now. We've also got primitives, which can be like your circular throbber, which means a little thing that spins in a circle like when you're loading. Um, menu anchors, spacers, quite handy. Another throbber where it kind of just does its thing. Special effects, background blur, okay? That's great whenever you're doing another individual like escape menu and you want to be able to just blur the background of your screen. And one thing to remember when you do put one in here, it defaults to blur of zero. You actually have to increase that. You've got uncategorized, okay. <coughs> Window title bar area. Now, <coughs> depends on what you're doing. User created. Now, like I've got my crosshair, my scope, and my other widgets. I can bring widgets into here and use them as well. But right now we're just focused in on this guy. This is going to be our vertical box. And I will anchor it to the center of the screen, but I'm going to start building some functionality first. And we're going to put in a series of buttons. They're going to be um, probably not functional at first, and then we'll start adding in some function to them. So our vertical box is going to be our main vert box. This is our main area and it's going to default to Z order of zero. That's fine. It needs to set on top anyway. So we're going to grab a button. We're going to drop it onto our main vertical box and we want to call this our start button and for right now this is just going to be to start playing the game. We'll grab some text and we'll drop it in on top of the button. You can see where, as you're putting it in, whenever it gets fully encased with that yellow circle there, and we know that we're on it. So we can click on that text block, and I want to make sure we're centered. And I'm going to change the text right here under Content, Start Game, and there we go. Now we can add some other functionality to our buttons. So if we want, we can add a click sound to it. Uh, so whenever we click, we get an audible click. Um, you can go to your style. You got a pressed sound, or you can make it make a sound here if you want to when you mouse over it, like a clicking noise or whatever, whenever you mouse over the buttons. Uh, but when you press it, it can click. You can change how it looks whenever it's normal. Whenever you hover over it, it can have like a different color. Um, and then when you press it, um, also, you can apply images to it, so you can have your own custom button there. Uh, I'm just going to leave it absolutely plain for right now. Changing the appearance and style is something for another day. We want a functional menu. So this is our first button. It's the start button. And before we start throwing in other buttons, let's go ahead and throw in a spacer. So I'm going to grab it and I'm going to just drop it onto my main vertical box. It will put it next in line automatically. And you've got two measurements here. The first one is your X. So let's add 20. That's only going to be left and right. Your Y, if we put 20 here, it's going to be your vertical. So now we have a little spacer to go between our buttons. 
And I'm not going to get really complicated on, on doing these. And if you've already created a button that has all kind of styling on it, you can actually just um, right click on it, copy it, and then come back to your main vertical box and paste. And you can just copy and paste as many as you want to. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do it manually. Um, I'm going to put in another button here. I'm just going to drop it on top of my main vertical box. So it puts it next in line. And what do we want? We want some text on top of the button there. So what do we want for our functionality for our, our main menu right now? Even though these may not be functional just yet, we'll call this our settings button and we'll come back in later and we can put some settings in like video settings, audio settings, things of that nature. And I'm just going to change the text over to settings menu. So we'll actually be able to do things like this main vertical box. We can turn this into a variable by clicking there. And what that means is now we can actually set visibility of it. We can turn this on and off as we need to. This spacer, I'm going to go ahead and copy it. And I'm going to click on my main vertical box and I'm going to paste. It's going to put it next in line, so we're good to go. So you can see there's our, our spacer. So what else will we need? A start game, settings menu, um, and let's actually increase this spacer and we're just going to have a quit game button. We can add more buttons as we need to, but I'm just going to go ahead and limit it to this. And I'm going to make this 50. I want a bigger space in between there. And we'll add another button to our main vertical box and text on it. So this is going to be our exit button. Now buttons are automatically variables and you'll see what I mean by that here in just a minute. The text, let's go ahead and exit game. So now I'm going to go ahead and compost and save and I'm going to go to my event graph and I'm going to get rid of every damn thing in here. Alright, so compost, save one more time and our first button was start game so I'm going to find it right here and click on it. Variables mean that it's actually something here that I can work with in the variable list. So on clicked, I'm going to select that. And then settings was our second one on clicked. And our final one was exit button on clicked. I'm going to go ahead and knock out this one first. And this is very complicated. When we click on that button, we want a quit game. Um, specific player. Well, there's only one player, but if it wants to be specific here, um, get player controller. Um, I know it's complicated, but, you know, one of those things. Alright, so our start button, we, for right now we don't have, well we do have more than one map, but we just really wanted to go into the one map. And our settings button, we don't have anything here, so I'm not going to put anything on that one just yet. So from here, all we want to do is open level. and the level that we want to choose. Let's go ahead and compost and save. We can go to our maps folder and for right now let's just use level one. Again I'm going to select it. I'm going to hit F2, Control C and then click off of it and I've just copied the name in so I don't have to remember the exact spelling because it needs to be exact here. So Control V, paste it directly in here. And that's all we need. Um, we don't need to worry about making it a listen server because we're not doing a multiplayer. An absolute is fine. So if we compost and save now, this is our main menu. So what I want to do here is I'm going to go ahead and shrink this down a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and anchor it to the center of the screen. And let's make it more uniform. So let's make it um, 300 by 225. reason why I'm trying to organize that, let's actually make it 
is I want to now be able to get this measurement, which needs to be half of this one. So this will be negative 150. This one needs to be half of this one, so negative 125. And that's going to center it up in the middle of our screen. We can compost, save, and that's our main menu for now. We can add other things in, like cool background images, um, and I'll look at ideas of like maybe putting a character that's animated standing there in the background. We can do all kinds of stuff like that. Um, for now, we want it to be functional, and let's go with that. So now our main menu map is actually done. Our, our main menu widget is actually done for now. So let's actually go into edit our level blueprint. Now, on event begin play is all we need right here. We need to create a widget. The widget we're going to create is our main menu. Owning player, well, we just need to get player controller. And we need to definitely make sure that we have add to viewport and then we want to make sure we have a mouse cursor so set show mouse cursor check that to true play set linked here and shove it on the end and that should in theory now give us our main menu as soon as we load the map so I'm just gonna hit play in this mode right here and there we go I don't have a mouse cursor um, Let's check that. So we hit play. My mouse cursor is not there. So let's actually um, try playing it in a new window. And again, I have no mouse cursor. Why don't I have a mouse cursor? Because I haven't ensured that I set the actual game mode set input mode to UI only now we can shove that puppy dog in here connect it in line connect that in line and since we have a widget so let's widget to focus we'll plug that into here and now we should have our mouse cursor. So let's compost and save one more time. And we hit play. Oh, really? I've only ever done this every frickin' time. And no problem. Event begin play. Let's make sure that our game mode is set to none. Worst case scenario, we can actually create our own game mode. But we don't want anything selected right here. We don't want any of this stuff. We don't want any kind of stuff going on. There we go. We just set base game mode. So now we can go to our settings. It doesn't work. Go to exit game. It actually works. Go back in here. We click start game and it loads our map in. But when we're playing right now, we're in, in this. So if I hit escape, it's just naturally going to go ahead and kill the game. But if we were to actually launch this into a standalone, which is going to simulate your, your player is actually in the game playing, we won't be able to exit the game at all once we're actually, you know, build this as a game, we're playing it. How are we going to be able to get back out of it? So, same thing where we did for our main menu, we need to create an escape menu. So, let's go back into our widgets, and we're going to create another user interface, widget blueprint. We're going to go W underscore escape underscore menu we're going to do the same thing but this time we're going to go ahead and use for our background our special effect background blur and I'm going to anchor this to full screen 
I am going to remove my offsets back to zero and I'm going to go to my blur strength and I'm going to set this to we'll say 40 so it'll blur everything nicely so now I also want to make sure my Z order is set to negative 5 and now whatever we build on top of this will let us go back into it so really simple let's go ahead and grab our vertical box again and where did it go our vertical box let's actually delete that vertical box we want to drag it into our main canvas panel and there it is so we'll grab our vertical box let's drag it over here and let's go ahead and give it a size let's go ahead and do the same thing we did before uh, size of let's go with 300 by 200 we'll probably resize it again here in a minute but let's go ahead and anchor it to center we can do negative 150 and negative 100 which will perfectly center it up in our screen and now we can start adding some buttons in well we know what that is and we know what that is so we're only going to have those two so let's add in our first button to our vertical box throw some text on it and this one is going to be main menu button and we're going to change our text to exit to main menu then let's go ahead and create another uh, spacer grab that throw it into our vertical box and our spacer let's make that 50 so we can put some space in between and we'll throw in another button with some text drop it on our vertical box grab our text throw it on top and let's call this our resume button and resume playing okay so that's really all we need for our functionality here is just exit the main menu and resume playing so we'll compost and save go into our event graph and let's nuke this stuff and on main menu button on clicked resume button on clicked resume button is going to be easy um, simply we just want to go back to our playing so we need to set input mode to game only now we could have we don't have an event begin play so we'll handle the the input mode change and the actual player blueprint so we get our player controller here set input mode to game only and we want to set show mouse cursor leave it unchecked so we can get rid of our mouse cursor and last but not least drag out from here and remove from parent that's going to remove the widget from our view so that should cover our resume gameplay so on clicked main menu button um, very complicated here open level <laughs> and again let's compost and save and we want to go to our maps because we can't remember how we spelled it main menu map F2 excuse me what the hell um, yeah click on it hit F2 control C and then click off of it go back here click there and there we go we're going to open our level to main menu map so we're just going to leave this this map and go back to the main menu it's really really simple so that's going to get us back to the main menu this is going to kill the widget 
Um, so everything here is done. So now we need to go into our player. Characters, blueprints, player base. And we want to create some functionality. Come over here under our event begin play because we're going to be neat and organized and we're going to type in keyboard escape. So now if we hit the escape key, what we're going to do is create a widget. And the widget is going to be our escape menu. And of course we want to get player controller. Now, we have a few other things to do. We need to add to viewport. And we need to set input to input mode to UI only. Player controller gets linked to here. Widget to focus is linked to here. And then last but not least, we want to set show mouse cursor and check that shove in on the end and this is going to change us to where we now have a mouse cursor and we now have the widget so if we hit the escape key now keep in mind escape is how you would normally exit when you're playing in standalone mode so what we're going to do is actually whenever you're in this mode if I start game and I hit escape it's just automatically going to kill it so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to play in standalone game so if you're playing a new Pi window, Escape just kills everything anyway. So this is going to simulate that we're actually playing the game. Bring it up in a whole new window, and here's our main menu. We want to start game. Now we're sitting here playing, and okay, we're doing our thing. Well, let's hit the Escape key. Blurs the background, nice and neat, and let's resume playing. That works. Realize, okay, I just want to get out of here, so... Hit escape and let's go back to the main menu. There's our main menu and now we can click all day long on this because we didn't set any functionality. But now we can either go back and start the game again which is starting a new game and exit game is going to exit the game. Ah, oh, so simple. So let's go ahead and comment that out and this is our escape menu. And since it's a functionality thing, let's go ahead and make it yellow. Lovely. All right, that couldn't be any simpler. Now, there's things to keep in mind whenever you're creating your main menu. Um, since we're in our main menu map, let's also go to Edit. Let's go to our Project Settings. And what we want to look at is Maps and Modes. So we can actually default this to game mode and default this to when we first load up go to our main menu map on both startup and default map so now when we first go into our game it's going to or even if we're coming into here to edit it's going to come into our main menu and allow us to do it that way so now when we go to play we can actually get a sense of how the game's going to feel now, this is, like I said, a very simplistic thing. You can do a lot of stuff with this. You can add background music. Um, we can add a player standing right here, which our player is just a set of arms and a gun. So, you know, we probably don't want to put our player in there. But we've got the third person stuff in here anyway for our bots. We can actually get our one of our, you know, third person uh, meshes, create a um, a new version of... So let's actually say, we don't even need to make it a character. We can actually just come in here and create a new blueprint class, make it an actor, and main menu, player. And we know it's a blueprint, so we'll just put that on the end. And I mean, we can add a component of a skeletal mesh, and then come over here and say our skeletal mesh is our mannequin we can tell him to use a specific animation class which is um, third person animation blueprint 
So he's sitting there doing his little idle thing. Or we can actually use the other one, which was the UE4 Hero. But then again, that's actually a different mannequin. So I'm going to have to change to this guy. And then if we want to, we can add the gun in here because this skeleton actually has that. So let's actually add in a component of another... Is our gun a skeletal mesh or is it actually a static mesh? We need to look at our first person... FP weapon mesh. It is a skeletal mesh. So I'll go ahead and select it. And come back in here, add component skeletal mesh, there's our gun, we'll socket that to our main hand and compost and save, and now we got our, our dude standing there holding a gun and we can save that. Now here's the, the, the fun part is if we want that to show up in the map itself we need to place him in the map since when we load our main menu map we're not going to see anything because we have nothing in our map so if we actually add a point light we're not going to see anything so let's actually take for right now just so we have a reference point of something here and a point light so we can see there's something in our map and I'm actually going to take this guy and this guy go to details and I'm just going to zero them out And I'm going to hit the F key so I can focus. And then I'm going to grab my point light and drag it up so we have some illumination in here. So now I can actually take this uh, main menu player, stick him in here, and rotate him around so he can be facing us. And then reposition my point light so that we can actually see our guy. So that's our thing is we, we want to see what we're looking at. We can put multiple lights in here. You can do all kind of stuff in here just to get it illuminated the way that you want. Um, if I leave it at zero, we're not going to get perfect lighting on this guy. If I lower it down some, we're just going to get some weird shadows. But another thing that we can do here is go into this guy and uncheck cast shadows on both him and the gun and then compile and save go back in here now we don't get any shadows from the gun or from our character itself so we can actually do it like that and that's going to be good enough for us we can actually remove our cube now and our character is just kind of like sitting there doing nothing now, what we can do is actually place a camera in the scene, or we can place a camera on our character, and we can create that, convert that into a render target. But if we looked at our main menu map, let's actually just load it into selected viewport. See, we don't see anything at all, because we've got this solid black background here. If we actually took away that background and went into our widget for this and for right now let's go ahead and just just delete that so what is it going to look like if we play now um, well we, we don't see anything because our player is not necessarily in the right location so if we think about it well where is our guy at let's focus in on him there's no camera. We have nothing to, to view here. So, I mean, even if we hit play right now, now we can see him. So, let's actually go back to stop. And this is not going to guarantee that he's going to be there. We hit play, and we can see him. He's animated. This is not the appropriate way to do it. And I'll show you why is if I hit stop and I hit play in standalone game let's see if it actually works so 
see it doesn't work because we don't have a camera we'll start game escape go back to main menu so we need to actually create a camera I'll put the camera to a render target so let's actually add a component of a camera and our camera itself I'm gonna spitball this cuz I may get it right on the first try I may screw it up on the first six tries but what we want to do here is we want to position our camera in front of our, our player and we want to add another component which is a scene capture component 2D okay and with that scene capture component 2D we have our texture target right here we can actually go to this and select render target and I want to go ahead and save this in my assets and materials and I'm going to do this as our RT underscore main menu underscore bot whatever um, so let's save that now we've created a render target let's actually find that render target and it's in our materials folder and if we look we can see his foot yay I want to change this to 1000 by 1000 and save I'm going to go back into our character and I'm going to compile and save one more time and there's our foot that's ah, amazing so since we're seeing our foot we just need to make some adjustments to our camera let's zoom out hit compile save go to our render target huh still not there so just make adjustments to your camera compile save look at this so you can actually it takes a little bit of, of patience and practice I mean if you sit here and, and take your time keep looking at it it's not changing Because our scene capture component 2D needs to be attached to the camera, and let's set that back to 0, 0, and 0 attached to the camera. That's what I did wrong there. So now we make our changes to our our character. Um, compile and save. I want to grab my camera because it's got the scene component applied to it. Make a change, and now you would think that it would be pretty evident, but it not always is. And it appears sometimes that the, yeah, let's change our rotation. Because it was rotated 90 degrees for some unknown reason. So there is our character. So now we can just go ahead and no stupid grab the camera make changes compile and save you want to fill up as much of the uh, the scene as you possibly can so let's actually move it up compile save look at our render target a little bit too far up So make your adjustments to your camera with your scene capture component 2D attached to the camera. And I think this will be good enough if we just lower it down a little bit. There we go. Our guy's pretty much centered up in there for our render target. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. I'm going to close that guy, 
close this guy, close this guy. Everything is good to go. Now, to get this to actually show up, we need to make this into a material. Well, let's actually go back into our widget, and it's a weird process. We have to make it, it'll break it, and then we can fix it. Makes no sense. So, I'm going to grab an image, and I'm going to put my black background image back in there, even though it may not be necessarily a thing. Negative 5, we want to anchor to full screen, set our color back to black, and we're already anchored, so we just need to remove our offsets. And now we need another image. Let's grab that in here, and we're going to go ahead and scale it up to eh, whatever, that's fine, and let's anchor it to the center. Alright, so what we need to do here is actually go back to our materials, grab our render target, and we need to create a material. So that looks lovely, and let's hit save all, and we can see it's there, right? So now, we go in here to our brush and select it, and it's going to give us a little warning here. This material does not use the UI material blah 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 change the material domain so okay you click that and compile and save and it just broke your material so now go back into your material and reconnect this to your final color and then save and now we got our little dude there we can scale it however we need to to make it look right let's set our Z order to negative three so that even though we may overlap here it's always going to stay underneath so you can set up your character to look however you want whatever animation pose you want set them wherever you want So now we've got our dude, and he's doing the animation. So let's actually play now and stand alone. So you can set up that camera however you want. You can build a little small scene. You can have NPCs walking around. You can do all that kind of stuff. And what in the crap is that? Hmm. So this this character right here it doesn't need to be in a visible location um, you can actually grab him and um, undo because I want to grab him and the light and just drag them way down low because it doesn't matter where it is in the scene and if you start seeing artifacts or anything like that in it um, you might have to reposition them so let's check our menu now let's actually go in here and play a new pie window there we go. So, there's our dude. He's standing there doing idle, and, you know, simple enough, right? You can put graphics in here. You can put the name of your title of your game, or you can put, um, I like kissing frogs, or what do you, whatever you want in your menu. It's your menu. So, if you want to put, like, a banner right here with your, your game name, um, you can keep it simple or you can make it complex um, I'm gonna come back over here and I'm just gonna grab text and I'm gonna leave it anchored to the top right and I'm gonna change this text to say to and yeah, let's make it all caps tutorial and well that's a little on the small side let's leave it anchored to the left let's go to our font and it's already bold it's already Roboto um, you only got the one font in here you can add more fonts to Unreal Engine 4 if you want but I'm not going to do that for right now I'm just going to 
say let's try it at 180 oh that's glorious enough tutorial and because um, because I am me let's compost and save let's go in here to my textures and I'm going to add in one of my Beefalo Bart logos because I are the guy making this game I am ages and let's grab this guy put him in here and I'm going to select that and then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to grab an image throw it in here resize a little bit click here in my brush and there's my logo it's beautiful isn't it and I'm going to anchor this to the bottom right I'm sorry bottom left oh dyslexia my friend and we'll make sure this is negative two whatever so make sure it goes behind our our menu here and one final text and we want to fill across here we want to change this to bottom center follow part and let's just make it a little bit bigger sixty yeah it's close enough and we'll put it there Isn't that a lovely main menu? Looks like shit, doesn't it? So, that's our main menu. And I'm going to go ahead and play this guy in standalone mode. And save selected. So now, in our main menu map, we've got our main menu. When we first start the game, it comes up to this. we got a dude sitting here animated in the background. We've got some beautiful imagery. Got my name here. It's a tutorial. And I can go to the settings menu. It doesn't do jack diddly squat. Um, I'll come up with some, some things to put in here. Like when we click on the settings menu, we can make this right here disappear and only show the buttons for the settings. So in a future video, we'll, we'll add some more functionality to this. Like if you want to change your screen resolution or what have you. But this is it. And again, you can hit exit game. It'll close it out. Or you can click start game right now whatever I select start game it goes to the only map that I've got in here and you can play the game so we hit escape menu while we're playing and we can resume game or we can exit to the main menu which brings us back to here and we can exit game lovely awesome super cool right hit save all now if we decide that we want to package this up so that we can play it as a standalone game and show this off to all of our friends because we made a really super cool awesome game even though that's kind of lame right now but because the bots can't hurt us but nonetheless um, right now we've got a lot of junk all in here uh, one of the things I do recommend is like on your starter content if you're going to use it first thing you need to do delete the maps It'll take a few moments to go ahead and delete them to get rid of them, but it's going to cut down on any, any potential issues with file size. Um, show you another thing here as well. Um, mannequin, we're going to leave maps. We only really need our main menu map and our level one if we're going to package this. So we'll go over here to edit and project settings, and then go to packaging. For development, that's all we really need to worry about for now. 
and all these options are pretty good. Um, let's actually click here, show advanced. And what we'll do is we'll come down here to list of maps to include in a packaging build. I'm going to have two. I'm going to click on the dots here, and it's going to go into my content folder. I want to go to the maps folder, and I want to select my main menu map. The other one is level 01, which is the only map that we have that we can play on right now. And I'm going to select level 01 and OK. So now when we package up our project, it's going to only package those two maps, and that's going to help to reduce file size. There's a lot of other options you can look through. Um, you can add other stuff in here. Um, create compressed cooked packages. Exclude editor content when cooking. Um, yeah. There's a lot of things you can do to check in here that, that can potentially um, narrow down how much is actually put in there. Generate chunks. Probably a good idea, but generate no chunks. Mm. Chunk hard references only. Yeah. But I'm not doing this for distribution. I'm only doing this for um, development. And I'm also going to go to supported platforms. I'm not doing this for everything. I'm only going to do this for Windows. Finsta. Windows. So I uncheck all those other things. So that's going to be good to go. Asset manager. Um, directories to exclude. We can We can do that. Um, primary asset types to scan, not really going to mess with that. Only cook production assets. So yeah, I'm not going to worry with that. Um, so everything should be good enough for actually packaging right now. So we got target hardware, that's fine. Supported platforms, that's fine. Our packaging is good. We don't have any movies. Our maps and modes going to be main menu map on both and default game mode gameplay tags we don't have any right now description you can put in the description of um, tutorial FPS game project name FPS game um, version 1 sounds lovely this is Buffalo Bart Gaming Company distinguished name, your mom's best friend. Um, homepage support contact. I haven't seen where this actually pops up anywhere else, so really not all that necessary to work with. Um, so yeah, that should be good. So once we make our changes, we can actually just go ahead and hit close. Done. They're automatically saved. And I'm going to end this video by packaging this. And if you guys would like to see this right now and play this have fun with it do whatever um, I can package this up and I'm just curious to see how big this uh, package is down to so I'm gonna go to file and package project Windows and Windows 64 bit for those who would like to contribute to the delinquency of me um, I'm getting ready to go through for this weekend I want to plan like Saturday and do a smoke out, which I'll do another video here shortly on the smoke out. Um, so, but yeah, if you want to make donations and let's say minimum twenty dollar donation, I will package this up as a uh, project. And for people who will contribute twenty dollars or more, we'll get this project free. All the files that are in here are all free stuff. So it's not like I'm giving away anything free except for all the work that went into making it to this point. Even though everything that was done on this was done during streaming, if you don't want to actually go through the trouble of actually doing it yourself, then make a donation and I'll send you this. I'll, we'll cover that in another video here shortly, but let's go ahead and I'm going to start packaging. And as soon as it's done, then let's say, go ahead and give it a location to go to. I'm going to go to my F drive and I'm going to create a new folder called um, Tutorial FPS. 
and we're going to use that folder as the folder I'm going to do this to and it'll either crash quickly or it will do its full build if it's going to do a full build then it's going to take a while so I'm going to let this build and I'm going to go ahead and get set up for the next video which we'll talk about the smoke out and some other things and I'll let you know what the file size whenever it gets done of this project is all right, guys, I want to thank you for watching, and check back here, um, I would say, in about 20 to 30 minutes, and, wow, well, really, this is moving pretty quick. It's already completed portions of it. Um, hmm. Yeah, um, package command started um, and completed. Archive started. Stage command completed. Yeah, a lot of the stuff is already completed already. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate to that folder, and it's successful. Done already. So I call this the what, tutorial. And of course, you're hiding it from me, you crap operating system. Let's see here. Tutorial FPS. It packaged it down un uncompressed. It packaged, uh, bleh, packaged it down to eh, 520 megabytes. So, since it actually was successful, I'm going to go ahead and minimize this and actually run the, the standalone game of it. Then I will compress it and see how small it is compressed. So yeah, this is it right here. It always packages in a Windows No Editor folder, and I don't like that. So I just copy it back down to the root folder of like, Tutorial FPS. So let's run the project and see what it looks like. Here's our main menu. Our dude just standing here idle. My graphic. Everything is good. There's no music, which is going to kill me, uh, but oh well, I'll live. And I can go to start game. Yay, we have a playable game. Die. So yeah, that's it. Hit escape. This is our escape menu. You can resume playing. Or go back to the main menu and exit game. Shit, it's quick. <laughs> so let's see how big it turned out to be compressed. And it's clicking along pretty good. So it's 520 megabytes once it's um, extracted out. And the file size for it packaged up. Drum roll. All right, so it is called Tutorial FPS. So I'm going to zip up um, things here. 185 megabytes, not too bad. Probably take about 15, 20 minutes to upload in this current form. So yeah, that's cool. So we have a game. Well, I have a game. You don't, because you know, you got to make it. Or you can you know pay me, and I'll give you the the source files instead of just giving you the standalone the, uh, the actual standalone playable version if you guys want it you know that's one thing I have to update it daily because I'm making changes pretty much every day to it but there's where we are we have a playable standalone game and we can run around and shoot things that's pretty much it and all you can do is run around and kill things and that's you know the, the thing Another video I will do later this evening is a scoreboard. So we'll make sure we have like 20 or 25 bots in here. And whenever you kill them, you'll get a score. We'll have a scoreboard viewing in the upper right hand corner of the screen, that kind of stuff. And maybe kill stats. When you fire, you can count shots fired. And you can count hits. 
and you can, maybe if you wanted to, you can set up a stat screen. Well, you fired 37 shots, but you only made um, 25 hits. Or you also you, you killed 14 bad guys before you got killed, or what have you. So, that or that, and I am going to exit the main menu, and exit game, and exit stream. Alright guys, thanks for watching, and I'll have another stream coming up shortly.